Hello and welcome back to Alfame. Today I'll work on the layouts of the coasters as well as some terraforming and path work to get a general good idea of what it's going to look like without the scenery uh, before I get into theming the ride. Now one thing I want to say about this video though is that it's a little bit different from usual. I, for one, made the time lapses a little bit <laughs> less fast. They're 10 times sped up which is not much less than the usual 12 times, but it's still a bit less. I also cut out some parts of the time lapses, and then there were some parts of making these layouts that I just didn't record, for the reason that I don't think me building coasters works quite as well with the time lapse format as it does with making scenery, just because there's a lot more camera movement involved with the tweaking of the layouts and uh, smoothing it out and seeing exactly where it's gonna go. And that's basically why I wanted to cut out some of the bad parts to not make this video too crazy um, in terms of a lot of shaky camera movement and all that stuff. There was also the fact that at the end I actually filled my entire hard drive so, so I couldn't record the very last part of making these layouts. But yeah, there is a general idea to making these coasters which I do want to explain a bit. It basically boils down to a lot of inspiration from Nemesis and Dragon Challenge, I think. I've talked about Nemesis a little bit in the last video, it's, you might probably say, the best, one of the best inverts in the world. It's in Alton Towers and it's really beautiful terrain conforming inverts. It never gets really high from the ground, but it still has pretty heavy layouts and uh, beautiful scenery and path interaction around it as well. And I took a lot of inspiration from Nemesis for this ride. There's actually quite an ode to it in the elements, in the order of the elements of these coasters, since much like Nemesis, this these coasters are gonna start out with a corkscrew into a zero-g roll, a looping in the lowest section of the layouts, and finally another corkscrew before they enter the station, even though the parts between the elements are completely different, and the general layout is obviously gonna be vastly different. There is um, the very similar order of elements there. But aside from that, I would say there is quite a bit of dragon challenge influence in here since while well, the color scheme is a bit similar even though it is just a placeholder color scheme i might just change that at some point in the future i'm not sure how big of a fan i am of this one but dragon challenge is the only dueling inverted coaster in the world so that's pretty much the only reference i have for it but it's not a terrain coaster so that's one thing that makes a difference and why it wasn't actually as big of an influence for this ride as you might think uh, most of it is definitely down to Nemesis, but there is quite a bit of uniqueness to this ride as well since the first section of the ride is going to have these coasters basically side to side and doing a lot of elements together and interacting a lot with each other's tracks while the trains kind of pass each other. And that's something that Dragon Challenge doesn't really have. Hell, <laughs> I think they don't even synchronize anymore, which is kind of a shame. But they have like complete different layouts which don't interact as much, at least not side to side in a sort of zigzag pattern as these coasters do. And I figured it would be nice to actually have these coasters go, well, pretty much next to each other until they hit the middle of the track where they split apart and pretty much do their own thing. And that's the very basic idea of this layout. And starting off I had a sort of nemesis beginning kind of part with the curve into the first corkscrew on that hill over there which both coasters kind of interlock with the corkscrews and go over each other, which is pretty fun. And the next element that I wanted to get in over here, which was a bit tight, might want to look at that a little bit more in the future, is going to curve into a zero G roll over the lift hill, which I figured, for one, it's, well, an element that fits in pretty well after the corkscrew like this, but it's also, you know, it provides a fun sort of weenie over the lift hill in the pretty prominent zero-g rolls that are symmetrically, uh, symmetrically placed over the lift hill and also kind of have a near miss in them as well. I wanted to have the like feet of the cars to nearly hit each other as you go out of the zero-g roll so that's why both the coasters have a zero-g roll for facing the other way just so you kind of have that near miss effect in the coasters. One of the things in which I might get back to look at are the uh, zero G roll specifically though, because there is no hard lining in them. One of the things which kind of bothers me about the smooth tool is that even though there is a hard lining feature in the game, which is amazing, something I've always wanted basically, it is pretty much undone as, as soon as you start smoothing them out. You can probably kind of tell as I'm smoothing out these zero G 
rolls over here. They lose a lot of their shape, but they also lose their heart lining, so they turn into some, you know, decently smooth 0G rolls in the end, but they don't have much in the way of heart lining, so I'm gonna have to tweak that probably at some point in the future and go about that very carefully and manually to make it a bit more realistic because just some handmade heart lining for a second here doesn't really cut it yet. But that's something I'm gonna have to look at in the future. Anyway, I did a qu very quick test run over there which I cut out and it's pretty much annoying lighting now but that's not too big of an issue for a coaster building so pretty much just went on for this day. Next thing that I wanted to have is a zigzag element, which is kind of unusual for, a, well, an inverted coaster. I don't know about Jovanola, one of the uh, tough things about this, as you might notice, is that it's a Jovanola coaster instead of a B&M invert, which is simply because the B&M invert comes with a color scheme that doesn't really fit the theme I figured, and the, G and the Jovanola cars just fit it a bit more, but there's only one Jovanola coaster in real life, and I think the only real difference that it has from B&M coasters is that it features more helixes and has a double corkscrew which is un b &M like but for pretty much all purposes this is basically two B&M inverts with Jovanola cars on it. That's what I would figure in any case but I don't think there's any kind of zigzag element, not in this kind of sense, on any B&M inverts but since I had the two tracks together I think it would be fun to have a part where the coaster tracks just curve well next to each other and in and out of each other and over each other and just kind of do that interchangeably for a while and have the zigzag element that way before I head into the low part because as you can already see I'm starting to develop this little valley underneath the castle where I'm gonna want to have the lowest parts of the inverts so before I head into that I still had a lot of speed over here so I needed, well, to do something over here and lose a bit of the speed of the coasters and that's why I wanted to have this high zigzag part here. But after this part, they are going to dive straight into that valley after they do a little turn around here and have the deepest point of the ride, which is going to be the looping, much like Nemesis actually, which is also going to be like the most eye-catching parts of the layout in terms of having all sorts of paths around the looping and things like that, which is un-nemesis, like. But yeah, before I went into that, I still had to turn the tracks around, and you know, there might probably be some people who are wondering how the hell I got these things to synchronize. That was basically the answer, I pretty much just had to do a lot of try and error over here. One of the things which is really handy about this coaster building system though is, since it offers a lot of flexibility, and you can just well, test the coasters live, you can just kind of keep on going with the try on error to see if you can get them synchronized. Basically, the red one was lagging behind for quite a while here, so I just lowered a bunch of parts of the red layouts and raised a bunch of parts of the purple layouts, and that pretty much did the job. So, pretty happy with how that works, and they do in the end sync out really well, which I am going to not show off anytime soon. I'll probably only show that off in the final video. But it's definitely something which I'm really happy with. And I'm moving on, the looping in the middle of the valley is surprisingly, well, easy actually to get the shape in a decent kind of manner. It's definitely not a perfect looping, but I'm still quite happy with how it turned out. It's symmetrical at least, and it is actually pretty easy to get that very slight sideways tilt to be able to get back to the ground beside the track where you go up. And the general shape of the looping in that sort of um, oval kind of teardrop shape is actually something which I am pretty happy with how it turned out. I tried a few loopings before to see how I like could make them in the best way possible but they ended up becoming a bit too round and I am pretty happy with how the shape of these in the end has become. Though I had a few issues with the smoothing tool a couple of times because the smoothing tool and inversions is still sometimes a bit of an issue and some something to really get used to as well. And on corkscrews and loopings, it might just out of the blue start twisting your tracks in very strange ways, which can be kind of annoying. Now this is the part where I wanted to lower the purple coaster because it... Oh yeah, that was actually it, I think. Yeah, I needed to lower the... No, 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 I'm pretty sure I needed to raise the red coaster. And I think I did that off-screen. Pretty sure I did, but I'm 
yeah, I think the purple coaster was the one which was faster than the red coaster for quite a while. Anyway, I took some off-screen time there to fix the synchronization on the coasters and it should be more or less okay. Now after the looping, they kind of split ways and just go into separate directions. Partly because I felt it would be fun to divide it into two sections that way and sort of give them more freedom to go wherever I needed them to go in the second half of the coaster. And also partly because it just makes my life a bit easier since there were still some empty areas and I wanted to make sure that every single part of this valley would be filled with some coaster path and scenery interaction. So I wanted these coaster um, layouts to go and use the available space in this valley pretty well and go through as much of the scenery and the paths as I could. And hence why I figured it would be handy to have the purple coaster go over here so it can do some stuff over here, have a tight little helix and finally hook up back to the station and have the red coaster on the other side of the valley. And that is basically the plan. There's just a, an element where it turns around over here because I needed the coaster to turn around. And then there's the helix because a very tight helix really felt like something that I needed to get in these rides and I didn't have yet. So I at least wanted to make sure that both sides had a tight helix and a corkscrew, but aside from that, there was just a lot of playing about with um, the exact ways that I needed the layouts to go. There was also a bit of annoying path work over here because there's basically terraforming everywhere, but I wanted to avoid having to use bridges for this terraforming because it just makes life a lot easier when I get to scenery if the paths are attached to the ground instead of being bridges that go everywhere. Um, but I'm pretty happy with how the paths turn out in the end, though I have to say many of the paths aren't strictly very functional or there for park planning purposes, they're more or less just there to provide the interaction between the coasters and the path and to provide a nice setting because in the end I do want to turn this into an elvish village kind of idea and to be able to do that a little bit more well I figured it would be nice to have this uh, around here and just make sure that there's path going just about everywhere also just in case that I might add some utilities, restaurants, restrooms and things like that throughout the park eventually. Uh, now cutting a bit in time as well I think, or that was actually a pretty strange cut. Anyway, cutting a bit, I wanted to get to the, and this was actually a pretty tough part, I wanted to get to the transfer track of the red coaster. And uh, this was kind of annoying because I wanted to get transfer tracks in but I kind of got myself into a corner here. And there wasn't a lot of space left, so I really had to curve this outward quite a bit to have enough space for the transfer track here. Um, I had to move the purple transfer track to the other side of the purple coaster and have the red transfer track over here, which is just about tight, uh, tight enough, I figure, to make the area a bit compact, but not too tight. It's not too much like at all crammed into one very small corner, but I did want to make this path go over the transfer track here because obviously I still needed to hook up the exit and the entrance for the queue, so that was kind of a tough corner to make it all hook up over here. The queue is basically just gonna run around the castle and have a switchback section at some point on the other side of the castle, which is going to make for a somewhat lengthy queue, but then again that's a good thing and I don't think the queue layout is too bad. Um, and this also provides a pretty good space for the little path that hooks up from the exit to actually go into that area because the area where I just kind of expanded the terraforming is where I wanted to have a little valley and make sure that the red coaster does its thing with just about the same length as the purple coaster. Anyway, that's about it for the time lapse, so I'm gonna skip forward to my real time partner here. Alright, so this is what it looks like a little bit later, or maybe an entire stream later. Um, there's a bit of extra terraforming done, but one of the things to really keep in mind is that this is all very work in progress. The only thing that's really finished at the moment are the coaster layouts themselves, but truth be told I kind of want to keep the way that they run a secret for the final video, but I am really happy with how the general layouts of them came out with having the very high up section where they still duel and zigzag a lot until the loopings where they kind of split ways over here and I do feel it's got a decent sort of sense of compactness to it like there's 
Just about enough interaction between the paths and the coasters, yet at the same time enough space left to have some scenery around this area and turn it into this elven village kind of idea without making it too crammed. And one of my favorite sight lines is definitely still here and one I definitely want to keep clear as well. This over here definitely, uh, I should use that word a bit less, um, well presents a really awesome view of the castle anyway. Uh, the general idea is that I do still need to hook up the queue over here and turn this into an area. I hope to have some extra like high up elven buildings over here to provide the connection to the castle because at the moment it's kind of hard to see what the final scenery is going to look like. Uh, this is really the naked layout so it's going to look a lot different with all the scenery in place as well but also something to keep in mind is that the castle at the moment is like a really standalone thing and I want to, you know, make it somewhat connected with the rest of the scenery in this area somehow. Um, so I might add like arches on the sides and in any case I want to add some more heavy buildings on this side. I might get into some flat rides but I do want to get into restaurants and toilets and shops and that kind of stuff. And just some general scenery of the elven village to make it a little bit nicer. But this is the general idea and this is what I'm going to work with. Something that I do have to note now that I have the time to do so and it seems pretty relevant to talk about it at the moment is that I am working on this on this project basically to get it in for the competition uh, that's due on July the 1st and that is a very close deadline and I don't really have a lot of time to work on this until that deadline comes. So. I am more or less focusing on the final product right now instead of making videos of this. Like, I make videos of this because I record the time lapses now and then, which is nice and a nice byproduct of the making of this coaster. But the final product itself is the most important part for me for this. So, I might just do a lot of stuff off screen and only do time lapses of what I think is most worthy of doing time lapses of. So,. Stuff like the uh, heavy scenery of buildings, restaurants, uh, making the stations, that kind of stuff. But I might just leave out the things like adding rock work underneath the coasters. Because even though I definitely still want to feature some of it, it's kind of a repetitive thing. And I'm going to have to do a lot of it considering the scale of this thing. Uh, same goes for foliage. So there's going to be a lot of stuff that I'm going to want to do off screen or maybe in streams. And in that sense, this is going to be a bit of a different project than usual. Since the focus isn't really to make this a video series, but I'm making these coasters and just making these time lapses and random videos uh, of it just to update on it. I do reckon the majority of the making of is still going to get time lapsed, but just keep in mind that it's not going to be as much as I usually would do. But yeah, this is the look of the coasters. I'm gonna work on it a bit off screen to provide a good base for the actual scenery because at the moment it's still kind of a mess in terms of path work and terraforming. It's just a very rough sketch and this mess over here needs to be fixed as well. I'm probably gonna add a little bit of foliage and rock work in the lower sections to make sure that's all done and provide a good sort of foundation for the scenery in the next episode. So thank you guys for watching and I'm going to get right back to work.